I know that there's a point in time where you're, you're, you're getting other jobs and those aren't sticking, but eventually you end up finding some space at a studio. Uh, was that in New York City? Yeah, and it, there was like a five-year period after college where I tried to become a normie uh, and get a job. And luckily I proved to be unemployable. I was fired from a string of jobs uh, and I was failing in the real world. And I was just like, all right, unemployable, want to be a potter. I'm going to start teaching night classes at a pottery studio in Hell's Kitchen just to like, like get a namaste moment. And I was 27, unemployed, unemployable, teaching pottery night classes. It wasn't looking good. Mm. But you knew that that's what you wanted to do. I knew it's what I wanted to do, but I mean, really? Mm. Like being a potter, it's not a thing. Right. You know, when it's, it's a bad idea. There's like no dollars in pottery. So I, I never thought I'd be able to support myself. Uh, and luckily after failing at all my other jobs and failing as a normie, uh, I sort of had this, um, I sort of had this feeling like, all right, maybe I won't support myself. Maybe I won't have the bourgeois life I imagined for myself, but maybe that's okay. So um, I, I hear at that point then you, you start making your powder, you're back into it, and you make a cold call to a department store. That, and, 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 that, and that actually turns out to be your first big break, your first sale. Yeah, my first sale was to a like ultra glamorous emporium of chic in New York City uh, that was sort of the pinnacle of luxury and style. And I went from being uh, a an unemployed night class pottery teacher, yeah. uh, expecting a life of penury, uh, to hawking my wares at this like super glamorous emporium. And, you know, I was still living in penury, but I had like a, my first step into a possibility of something. Hmm. So that that ends up leading to you opening your first store a few years later. And that, that first store is in Soho, um, right? Yeah. And, uh, and so now you're starting to make this transition from, you know, solo artist to you have employees, you have a team, you have a store, you have potentially a plan even. Uh, <laughs> what was that, I mean, what was that transition like for you? First of all, I think the most important thing is that it was very slow and gradual. You know, I think in the world today, people are so used to seeing these sort of like overnight success stories. Um, and for me, it was anything but. Like, I started out without a dollar. You know, I, it was just me and pottery, which is really just like a one dude, some mud and a wheel. Like, it doesn't get more primitive than what I was doing with my life. And, um, you know, I, I didn't have backers or investors. I didn't even know that was a thing. I just thought, all right, I gotta like make these pots. And it was just a very gradual, steady uh, progress, sans plan, but you know, it, a lot of incremental success stories. And along the way, I just kind of made some decent decisions and some indecent decisions, as well as some bad decisions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lots of indecent decisions along the way and bad decisions. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was just a very gradual thing of sort of logical baby steps. How would you describe your leadership style? Probably a little quirky. My leadership style honestly comes from the fact that I feel that I'm with sort of a family of outsiders and I have an extraordinarily uncorporate culture. It seems funny to even talk about it, but I think that um, I kind of care about my people a lot, um, viewing them as humans rather than employees. 